friends, Marnie Hockenberg here, and I have a special guest. It's my dad, Bud Hockenberg. I'm glad to be here. Great. We're real excited that we're making another video together. We made a couple of videos together a couple months ago. And that was fun. It was really, really fun. We got a lot of great feedback. So we're here again as a um, daughter-father team. Now, today's topic is very timely. We are going to be talking about Elon Omar and Rashida Tlaib's sabotage of the Israeli election. And we're going to be talking about their hidden agenda. Right, Dad? Exactly. Do you want to launch into that and, oh, and share that? Oh, well, certainly um, A little history, of course, is important. Uh, uh, APAC has sponsored uh, freshman congresspersons to go to Israel, both Republican and Democratic. And there was a Democratic group of which uh, uh, Talib and Omar would have been a part. They were invited to go with Steny Hoyer to Israel uh, about 10 days ago, and they refused. Uh, then uh, after the group came back, uh, uh, they wanted to go to Israel. And uh, the Israeli policy, like uh, American policy, would be to exclude those who want to destroy their government through the BDS and purposes to eliminate the state of Israel. So, uh, however, the uh, Prime Minister of Israel did uh, offer humanitarian visa to uh, Tajib, Tajib because she's got a grandmother uh, in uh, Israel. And that was one of the reasons she wanted to go, to visit her 90-year-old grandmother, That's right? That's right. Absolutely, so yeah. And so the Prime Minister issued the invitation. She turned it down. Mm -hmm. So uh, the case where uh, hate of Israel eclipsed love of the grandmother. Exactly. Right. So um, now what transpired then after that? Well, uh, what transpired after that, it was pretty apparent why the uh, two wanted to go to Israel. You know, there's an Israeli election coming up September 17th, and so they wanted to go and combine with some terrorists on the West Bank and create some demonstrations and protests to interfere with the Israeli election, just like the Russians tried to interfere with our election. Imagine that. Yeah. So they, all their efforts uh, to do this uh, failed. And so there was an attempt at sabotage, which didn't work out. The interesting thing, of course, about this is they're both very promoters of BDS. Right. And the interesting thing is that the leader of the Democratic uh, Party, who took the uh, congresspersons to Israel, made a speech on March 24th in which he said, in quoting the founder of BDS, the purpose of BDS is to eliminate the state of Israel. Right. It's right there. It's so clear. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So they, they basically, they're promoting from the river to the sea, mm -hmm. Palestine will be free, which means that there will be no Israel, no state of Israel. Yes, and they offered to take a trip originally for, to Palestine and, and not to Israel. Right. So uh, to their uh, view, Israel does not exist. So our country would never admit people that wanted to eliminate the American Republic. So well, the Israelis were certainly right in, in their position, but they offered humanitarian, yes. and we found that exposed their, uh, their deception, which was really to create disruption. Imagine <clears throat> that, Islam's deception, Yeah. right? Exactly. That happens a lot, mm -hmm. right? Well, then, um, what about the uh, point where the um, television shows now, the news, the leftist news channels, are really kind of convoluting this and turning it around. Well, that's not unusual because the uh, leftist news channels are in favor of BDS, which is eliminating a nation of the state of Israel. They're very anti-Semitic. Of course they are. Yes. Yeah. And that goes through almost all of the media these days. The well, it goes to the left, it goes through MSNBC and certainly CNN. Yeah. Mm hmm Right. What do you think about Fox these days? I think they're doing a great job in presenting information which the American public needs to know. And they, of course, got the story right about mm -hmm. the sabotage. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So to wrap up, um, I think there's some good news and some bad news. What would you like to say about that? The uh, bad news for Omar mm -hmm. and Talib is they wanted to sabotage a democratic election. And the good news is the Israelis are going to have a free democratic election just like we had and we're going to have in 2020. Democracy wins and hostility and uh, sabotage loses. No place for hate here, right? That's right. Too bad. So sad. Yeah. Ilhan Elmi slash Omar Rashida Tlaib. 
That's the story. That's the story. Well, thanks so much for the scoop on that, Dad. Well, I hope this gets out to America. It will. We're gonna, I'm going to push this out on my YouTube channel. So out there, those of you there who are tuning in, thank you so much. Those of you who are already subscribing to my channel, thank you very much for listening. Please give us a like, share this widely, and we'll be making some more videos, right, Dad? Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, thanks so much. God bless America, and God bless. Get to a town hall in a little bit, so... The reaction um, in in my district has been um, uh, an overwhelming outcry uh, and condemnation of the particular action that's been taken uh, by the Netanyahu administration um, and the urging of uh, our president. I mean, people really are uh, appalled in many ways. Uh, people feel like when you are a United States citizen, forget the fact that we are members of Congress, when you are the United, a United States citizen, uh, that your president, your ambassadors, your State Department works on your behalf. They defend you um, and fight for your right uh, to, to, to freedom of speech, to freedom of movement, um, and, uh, and to have an administration um, and a president uh, and an ambassador that is not doing that puts fear in many people's hearts. They can't trust if they found themselves abroad um, or, or were thinking, uh, you know, someone was refusing them uh, a visa that their country would fight for them. Rashida earlier talked about Congressman uh, Diggs, who was denied a visa to enter a then apartheid South Africa. The United States government, our ambassador, our State Department, our president fought to make sure that he got that visa, and he did go. Uh, and so for, for us, um, this isn't, right? Everything is beyond us, and there are a lot of people who uh, currently feel like what is taking place is going to have a larger impact on, on them. You've heard from Jewish members um, of, of my constituency. We've, we had uh, a really wonderful meeting before I took my trip to get an insight of what kind of questions they wanted me to ask, what they were interested in um, me learning, and how they wanted uh, um, a check back in to happen after I'd returned. Uh, and we've heard from uh, you know almost every uh, single uh, Jewish organization here in my district who've issued statements. Um, many of, of the Jewish leaders in, in, the, in my district uh, and in, in Rashida's as well um, have been raising their, their voices. Many of our Jewish colleagues in, in Congress have, have reached out and have issued uh, a statement in condemnation. This is not uh, uh, an, uh, this is not an issue where there are some people who agree um, with, with this action that's being taken. Everyone understands as duly elected members of Congress who do appropriation, who are taking a vote um, in, in regards to what our foreign policy looks like in that region, that we should have access to see it for ourselves. And many of my, col my uh, colleagues and constituents from uh, the first day I got elected have been urging me to go see things for myself, um, to reserve judgment until I did. And this is what we